Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm gonna show you today what it looks like to release a knot in the muscle, specifically in the trapezius and rhomboids. Some of my techniques are unique and have been really effective for me, but before we begin, make sure that you guys subscribe below and like this video, and if it worked for you, make sure you comment. Now, it must be noted that we don't actually get knots in our muscles. When you feel areas that are bumpy, these are actually fascial adhesions or areas where different muscles or parts of the muscle are stuck together. When you go to move them, they are pinned down in a sense and they can't move or stretch fully in the direction they usually go. That's when you feel a pain. I'm on the rhomboids and the traps right now. The rhomboids are deep or underneath the trap and there are a couple areas that frequently get stuck and I'll show you these as we go along. So I'm warming up the tissue and this is really important. In order to access the deeper levels, you have to soften the layers as you go. The rhomboids are underneath the trap, so in order to get to those, you have to slowly warm up the trapezius. I started with effleurage and now with each stroke, I'm going deeper and deeper. It's best not to dig into the muscle with your elbow right away. I know for me this is the case and most people will tense up when pressure is applied too hard and too fast. You really have to do it gradually. I usually just go to the bottom angle of the traps here rather than go all the way down to the back. Now I'm going to start going really slow and begin to feel for those areas that are stuck. You can tell where the knots are when there is tissue that stops your stroke. It will feel thicker and firmer than the rest. This spot is usually kind of a traffic jam for your rhomboids, traps, and your levator scapula. And the other spot is right at the bottom of your shoulder blade. For whatever reason, most people have this stuck area. Especially people that lift a lot or people that are on their computer all day. It can be really painful, especially when you're driving or trying to sleep or even when they are breathing. Also, when people travel, they often get stuck in this area and they feel it in their neck. So they wake up with a creak in their neck and they think it's the bed or the pillow. But a lot of times it's just because this particular spot is stuck. Now, this is something that I have found helps a lot. When you find this spot, you're gonna pin it down and then you turn your elbow. This stretches out the fascia and then ask the client to take a big calming breath in and out. This can help the little fascial fibers slowly separate and it helps the whole thing to release. What I have found is most therapists, they don't wait for this to happen. And when you do feel it, the muscle will elongate and your elbow kind of moves out on its own. Now this is my favorite way to approach that lower spot. Doing some cross friction will help it get really warm and nice and ready. And then have your person put the, their elbow behind their back to help stretch out these muscles. And then slowly go in with kind of the same technique that we've been using. Just using it in this different angle is really effective for that spot because it can help pull the trap up and away from the other muscles. Our muscles have pain memories and sometimes they hold on to pain subconsciously and one of the best fixes for that is Gua Sa and I talk a lot about this and I'm going to link to one of my other videos up above but this is a scraping technique that will help release these fascial adhesions. A lot of times after a massage the tissue returns to its previous state when you go back to your regular activities. Guasa can help break up the fascial adhesions that you're sitting here waiting for to release. And that's what I love about it. I love when things are fixed faster and more efficiently. And so you should definitely check that out and see if that's something you want to include in your massage. So again, I'm waiting and holding for this muscle to release. So you'll notice that my forearm is turned the other way in this position, and this is purely for a comfort thing for your client. When you are massaging with your elbow and it's turned the other way, sometimes it can feel really pointy and sharp. When you have it this way, more of the fleshy part of your arm is touching them. And I, am, I do have more pressure coming from my elbow, but it just is a little bit more comfortable if you have your arm this way. So I usually try to, use it in this position as much as possible 
And again, here I am using some of those turning techniques, pinning, holding. I'm using my opposite hand to pull the fascia away in that spot. And I really like using that. One thing you want to notice while you're here is how high their shoulder blade can come. Some of this is genetics, but if you've worked on that person before and you know their shoulder blade usually has that nice ridge when they put their arm behind their back, this can, if, if it is a little bit flatter or pulled down or you just don't even have a ridge at all, it can mean that it, the shoulder blade is being pulled from the front or the other side of the shoulder blade. So you will want to check out the subscapularis and some of the chest muscles from the front. And then always finish your massage with some nice effleurage, help push some of that metabolic waste out and just help the body go back to a calm state after doing some deep tissue work. <laughs>